Greetings, fellow truth seekers. My name is Keisha, and I'm here to present my perspective on why I believe Tony Braxton was chosen as a replacement for Anita Baker. The question that arises is, what were the reasons for this decision? In this video, I will explain the factors that led me to this conclusion. Now, to fully understand the situation, we must start from the very beginning. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Let's start with Anita Baker, my fellow Aquarius. Yeah, she's an Aquarius who was born on January 26, 1958 in Toledo, Ohio. When she was two years old, her mother abandoned in her and she was raised by a foster family in Detroit, Michigan. Tragically, her foster parents passed away when she was 12 years old and her foster sister took care of her from then on. By the time she turned 16, Baker was already singing R&B at Detroit nightclubs, setting the stage for her remarkable music career. She gained prominence during the quiet storm period in the 1980s. Starting her career with the funk band Chapter 8, she released her debut solo album titled The Songtress in 1983. Her platinum selling second album Rapture included the Grammy winning single Sweet Love. Yeah. Well, she has won eight Grammy awards and has four platinum albums, ladies and gentlemen, four platinum albums. Okay. Her distinct low control vocals have left a lasting impact on music and still is. You wrote most of the compositions on this compositions yeah um there's um let's see there's like nine cuts mm -hmm. and seven out of nine i've either you know co-written or arranged or or wrote and um we did a whole lot of work this time <laughs> a lot of work and yeah. the jury is in so i can say this this is uh a, a stretch away from the kind of the formula from the, the first two albums. This is a different album for you, Nita, and you took a chance. And like I say, the jury's in. It's a hit. So so now it's it's good to. But didn't you worry about that a little bit? I was um, I was apprehensive, um, but I said, my God, I'm in the music industry, and if I opt to go into the recording studio and record live real music how can the music industry crucify me Absolutely. i mean it doesn't doesn't wash you mm -hmm. know uh so i worked that out then i had to work out uh well how is the company going to take this mm -hmm. you know um so basically <laughs> Did they worry they um i, I sent mean, you them you represent a lot of business for a record company let's face that's it that's true and they do worry mm -hmm. um but electra is a is a, is a strange kind of company it's ran by a different kind of guy Bob Krasnow is kind of a maverick, you know, he likes oh, sure. to let his artists kind of do what they want to do, you know, he doesn't bring people onto the roster that he doesn't think can handle themselves. Would you say the album has kind of a jazz flavor to it, doesn't it? It, um, I think it has a little bit of everything, but there are some heavier, jazzier things than, than on the previous albums, yeah. I've been asking everybody who comes on, because I want to do a, a, a survey and then have the singer's singer, who, who's your favorite singer? Oh, gee, I think everybody knows uh, the late, great Sarah Vaughn. Really? Uh, yeah. 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 Couldn't have a better choice than that. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm growing e fonder of uh, Betty Carter. I just got hip to her. Her phrasing mm -hmm. is amazing. Yours is, too, though. I mean, there, when, when Oh, you, you're nice. No, Thank no, you. no. I'm telling you, when you got up there... Uh, and I'm not just trying to get you back on the show. Please come back. Anita. Please come back. <laughs> uh, all the time, every time. But your, your phrasing is unusual, and uh, you bend notes, and you do all those things, and I can tell, you know, the influences, but then you have your own style that's emerged from that, and uh, obviously it's, well, it's, thank it's, it's great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now. Yay! <laughs> so we know your favorite, who's your favorite fisherman? 
My granddaddy. Is he really? My granddaddy. Nina likes to fish. Yeah. Did you know that? She likes to fish. Right. The women are going, oh, God, fishing. <laughs> oh, what is wrong with this woman? But you were in Japan. You were in L.A. at the Greek Theater. You're going to uh -huh. go out to Arkansas and then down in Florida and then mm -hmm. back up to Michigan. Exactly. Where the fishing will be just about perfect. We go, uh, we live on Lake Sinclair in Gross Point, And you go about 15 miles out uh, into Lake Sinclair. You're into Lake Ontario. Great fly fishing. Mm. You like bait. to fly fish? Yes. No, no bait. No. Now, with, with, <laughs> you don't want to bait? You won't bait? Uh -uh. The, you don't touch the worms or anything? We go fly fishing. No bait. And then the captain puts the fly on there. I <laughs> oh, just, stop I, it. I, I reel it in. I do. And That's then I and I cook it. Well, you, <laughs> it's close. Wait a minute. Hold on. I got a mental picture. There's like a, this guy out there, and you say, Captain, bait the hook. Okay, Nita. No, no they, <laughs> they, know that when you, they know that when girls come that they're going to have to, oh, you I, know. I, I, they know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love the worms are the best part, you know. No, no, no. My granddaddy used to, to, when I was a kid, and when I would go fishing with my granddaddy, we used to go in Canada, Point Pelee, sit on these big, big rocks over the, over the lake. Uh, I used to do that. I used to go to the bait shop with him, and he'd say, Needy, hand me some bait, and I'd mm -hmm. get him some bait, and hand him some bait, but yeah. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you are, you're a cook. You just mentioned you're a cook. I love, what's your well, best meal? Well, that's been part of my problem. If you're going like to all, or make us all a meal, what would the, the ideal Anita Baker meal be? I would be? Uh, make you, as a starter, mm -hmm. Uh, a nice Caesar salad. Oh, stop it. Uh, right on the table. Mm. Uh, I'd make you a nice corn chowder uh, with oh. it's like a potato soup base mm. with uh, fresh Ooh. corn and broccoli yeah. and, and, <laughs> and a little red pepper and green pepper. And then we'd take you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you stop it. Stop it. Food, food turns me on, Anita. Ah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i like chicken dishes for main courses i, I just do you like a nice little veal mm. uh sauteed veal with uh some little onions and a white white sauce and we do you a no-bake cheesecake for dessert a no-bake no-bake cheesecake, cheesecake. Everybody, oh man mm. it's good mm. <laughs> i want to go home right now oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're quite a businesswoman though and it's funny you know barbara streisand said that uh if you're a businessman, they call you, you know, a genius businessman. If you're a smart businesswoman, they call you a bitch. Have baby, you... <laughs> baby. What do you think? Uh, Would that I, be accurate? I think she's right. I think she's right. Um, I, lately, they've they've changed it from the you know drop the W, add the B mm -hmm. to uh, just like well she's got bat wings is what they say now. Oh wow. You know? But that's nicer than the than the B thing, you know. <laughs> the other thing, I'd rather say I'd rather have bat wings, you know. Uh, but it's just you know I come from um, inner city Detroit. There's a a thing in my mind that says to me if if my career it this was like a one in a million shot to even be here. Mm -hmm. And if this goes down the drain because of some type of incompetence, I could live with it being my own incompetence. Nita. But if it was someone else's, I'd like, ugh, I'd, ugh. It never will for you. You've got what it takes, believe me. Yay! And we all feel that way. Yay! Anita Baker! If you wish to research Anita Baker's history, the beginning of her break in 1994, was upon the arrival of Tony Braxton in 1993. If you look at the time of Anita's Rhythm of Love album and tour, she took a 10 year break after that. Was that purposely done or forced by the record label? You know, that was also the record label of Tony Braxton. Hmm. Yes, I'm talking about Atlantic Records, which signed Tony in 2009, but it was in the 80s where she was signed to arrest the records which was partnered with L.A. Face or La Face or however you want to pronounce him, which is ran by L.A. Reed and Babyface. As you know, Arresta is partnered with Sony Music, which is partnered with practically every music label in America. Well, let's look at Anita's history, though, with labels, because it's, it boils down to her music and beef with the record labels. As we know, Anita was originally signed to 
Aurora, which was bought out by Arrested Records in 1979. We all know that Arrested Records is run by the founder, Clive Davis. In the 80s and the 90s, Anita was on fire. She and Whitney, who both were under Arresta, were both on fire in their own lanes, though. So there wasn't any beef between the two. However, when Tony Braxton came along, she was willing to get naked and be down for whatever. Damn, a religion. And she had talented and beautiful sisters to bring with her, too. So thinking like a bisexual baby face and gay Clive Davis, who needed someone who can sing like Anita, but less conservatively... They went for Toni Braxton and her sisters. So picture it, Sicily. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just like saying that. No, but it was 1990. And, and Anita has been touring all over the world, dropping platinum albums for years nonstop. But in between all that, she managed to get married in 1988. And due to her crazy schedule, she married and they lost their first child due to miscarriage in 1989. Despite that, she kept moving, working, and touring for her composition album. However, upon the tour completion in 1991, Anita, who was 33 years old at the time, announced that she was taking a much needed break to settle down with her husband and have a couple of kids. They tried for many years while Anita stayed in the studio recording her Rhythm of Love album, which wasn't released until 1994. She also gave birth to two kids, one in 1993 and another one in 1994. During this time, they were working on a replacement and backup by the name of Tony Braxton. Oh, yes. And of course, her sisters. You see, they thought after Anita took her break to become a wife and mother, she would fade out. They introduced an artist named Tony Braxton, who was strikingly similar, sounded similar, whole nine yards. I mean, just clone, okay? An appearance as Anita. Now, with the release of a sample song titled, Love Should Have Brought You Home. Yeah, that song. However, despite Tony being a decade younger than Anita, which was a plus, they were... I mean, there were concerns that the release of Anita's album, Rhythm of Love, would not be successful. Surprisingly, the album included a track called Body and Soul, you know, which became her top 40 pop hit single in 1989. And the second single, I Apologize, earned Anita her eighth Grammy Award, Rhythm of Love, went on to sell over 2 million copies, making it in her fourth consecutive platinum selling albums. From December 14, 1994 to November 14, 1995, Baker embarked on a Rhythm of Love tour. Oh, yes. So I'm going to give you three hints about who today's I'll Tell You What is about. One, she is the reason behind one of the couples I've already covered. Two, she's currently on tour. And three, if you heard her music on a Saturday morning growing up, you knew good and well it was time to get out of bed and help your mama clean the house. I feel like the last one gave it away. But yeah, today's I'll Tell You What is actually going to be about the wedding and marriage of, of the one and only Anita Baker and Walter Bridgeforth. I'll Tell You What is a daily deep dive at some of the most epic and memorable weddings and marriages that have occurred throughout Black history. So let's go back to 1985. This was before Anita's Grammys. This was even before Rapture. She meets her soon-to-be husband, Walter, in the mall. She was in the mall looking for shoes and found a lot more. Walter was a marketing specialist for IBM, while at the time, Anita was pursuing her singing career. After about three years of dating, on Christmas Eve, 1988, Walter and Anita get married in her home in the suburbs of Detroit. According to Jet Magazine, this happened about a month shy of her turning 31. She wore a white satin Victorian style gown with lace and pearls, and the gown had a four foot train. As a gift to the couple, her niece played the Carol of the Bells on her clarinet. 
She said she didn't sing at the wedding, nor did they exchange personal vows. And as a wedding gift, Walter gave Anita a one and a half carat diamond ring. And after the ceremony was over, they listened to the latest Winans album as they decorated the Christmas tree. And don't think that just because they had a cute intimate ceremony that they didn't eat really well. The menu consisted of Cajun shrimp over rice pilaf, yams, canned apples, chicken breasts with a light vegetable gravy, Cornish game hen, roast turkey, black eyed peas, and a garden salad. And she kept her wedding a secret because she wanted to have something for herself. And in this Jet Magazine article, she also revealed that she was two months pregnant. And that might have been a surprise to some because she was about to wrap her three-month tour with Luther Vandross. And sadly, shortly after that article came out, Anita miscarried. Some speculated that the stress due to the tour may have contributed to it. Anita and Walter would actually experience two miscarriages before welcoming their two boys into the world. And in January 1993, their oldest son, Walter Baker, was born. And in May 1994, their second son, Edward Carlton, was born. And around that time, Walter had left his job with IBM and was a real estate developer. But sadly, their relationship came to an end. They separated in 2005 and their divorce was finalized about two years later. And after they divorced, they actually ended up back in court. Walter objected to the $12,000 he received as a 50-50 split of royalties from the two albums she released while they were married. He felt like that wasn't the full amount of the profits he should have received. Anita explained her side to the judge. Basically, the divorce settlement that they both signed did not include mechanical royalties. And according to soundcharts.com, because I did not know, mechanical royalties are royalties that are generated each time a musical composition is reproduced. Think about when someone comes up with a mashup and they post it online and then that starts to go viral, like she can get money off that but he couldn't. The judge agreed with Anita, and according to your web, they requested that a court-appointed expert rewrite the terms with Anita to include more mutually acceptable language. But that was over a decade ago. And as you can tell, Anita is doing quite fine. She is doing her final tour right now. She has reclaimed her masters and you can actually stream her music on Tidal or Apple Music. Though sometimes these stories end in divorce, there was once a moment of love that was shared. So tell me what you think. I want to know, as always, don't forget to catch up on old videos, follow us on IG and on here, and don't forget to come back tomorrow for another episode of I'll Tell You What, brought to you by HeWhite. Yes, Anita, my Aquarian sister, went on a nearly year-long tour with a newborn and a toddler despite her record label refusing to give her a break. The tour was very successful. However, following the release of her album, Anita Baker took a break from her career for five years to focus on being a mother and a wife. And this decision did not sit well with her record label, who were more concerned with financial gain. As a result, Anita transferred to another label within Warner Music Group, Atlantic Records, in 1996. Around the same time, Toni Braxton released her highly successful album, Secrets. Anita's break and the label's greed for money led to a lawsuit filed by Anita against Zamba Recording and its Dream Hire division, claiming damage to her recording caused by Hire 24 track tape machine. Oh, yes. In November of that year, yeah, Baker was ultimately dropped from Atlantic due to label reconstructing without releasing any material with the company. I mean, they were just like, okay, bye. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing and a bad thing. Anyway, now during her high heatus, Rhino Records released a compilation album titled The Best of Anita Baker, named Sweet Love, The Very Best of Anita Baker, in the UK in June of 2002. Now, the album went on to achieve platinum certifications like everything else by the RIAA, indicating sales over 1 million units in the U.S., and that was back in 2002. It's sold more than that since then. You see, there was a plan to replace Anita with Tony. However, Anita's resilience and her loyal fan base made the decision difficult, not to mention her artistic creativity with each album. 
Anita had a Midas touch, turning everything she did into a golden or platinum success. So what did they do? They decided to intensify the promotion of Tony. More nudity, more sex, more skin, more, more skin. Yeah, sad. This approach worked for a while and still does to some extent. However, Tony's lack of money management skills and her desire to show off and act like a queen of whatever, although she is one, she's a queen, led Tony into significant financial trouble. Oh, yes. Guess what, my truth seekers? Did you know that you can get exclusive commercial free videos on my Patreon? I post my viral and block YouTube videos on there and more and stories that I wrote. You know, I write stories, people. Oh, yes. I post them on there. I'm going to start doing my video diary on there pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. I need to communicate with my truth seekers. They are lifesavers. I love you all. Oh, okay. I'm supposed to be advertising my Patreon. The link is below. Anita is a legendary artist who did not have to compromise her values. In March 2021, she entered into a dispute with Electric Records over the rights to her master recordings, which she claimed should have been returned to her after the expiration of her contract as per copyright law. She urged her fans to refrain from purchasing or streaming her music until she was granted the rights to her music. In September 2021, 20, she announced that the dispute had been resolved and that she now owned her master. Breaking news. A Michigan judge issued a warrant for the arrest of Baker, 56, a lawyer for Reyes Smith Painting Decorating. Company claimed that she owes it $15,000 for renovations to her Detroit area home. According to the Associated Press, however, Baker's attorney, Jamal Hamoud, told the AP that he plans to file a motion today to cancel the warrant. He claimed that Baker was never served with papers and didn't know that she'd been sued. Hamoud added that Baker is out of town and will remain out of town until things are cleared up. The lawyer for the housework company said that he does not want to see Baker go to jail. And on another notable event, Baker performed the Star Spangled Banner in Philadelphia's Lincoln Financial Field before the 2022 NFC Championship game between the Eagles and San Francisco 49ers. Furthermore, in 2023, Rolling Stone ranked Banker at number 92 on its list of the 200 greatest singers of all time. She was number 92. That's a really good position. Oh, yes. Anita is now, however, on tour. Her tickets are on sale. So go support our queen, our Aquarius queen. The link to buy her tickets are below. And I know it's been some crazy rumors I've been hearing on TikTok about her canceling concerts and arguing and cussing out her stage crew. Y'all know it's drama doing these tours, people. And she had age. She's not having it, okay? But th still go support our girl, okay? Now, get back to the story. Oh, an update. While Tony was involved in reality TV movies and anything necessary to stay relevant, as I mentioned earlier, Anita again is currently touring well she's supposed to be still touring with babyface and not with tony braxton tony is working with cedric the entertainer you make the call <laughs> when an aquarius is angry trust me you're gonna know about it once they have reached that boiling point you better run think of an aquarius like the hulk if they can calm down and isolate themselves in time, they one transform into that big green monster. However, be warned, once they've reached that boiling point, there is no going back. An Aquarius attack will be verbal, never physical. They know exactly what buttons to press and what to say to embarrass, belittle, and humiliate the person they are arguing with. They are often called catty or bitchy. There is no holding back an Aquarian's opinion, especially once angry. The source of an Aquarian's anger comes from either not being understood, being lied to, and being rejected. Deep down, many Aquarians fear they aren't good enough. They often will compare their weaknesses to other people's strengths. A major issue that most Aquarians face is feelings of inferiority. They often feel they have to defend or prove themselves to everyone. Aquarius often jump to the wrong conclusion after a simple comment has been made. Drop a yes if you agree. 
Anita Baker has had enough of you babyface fans coming for her. She's gone on a massive Twitter rant about all of what you guys are saying to her. So this all started last month. And it's because Babyface posted on social media apologizing to the fans because he did not end up performing this particular night at the New Jersey Prudential Center because they were having a lot of technical issues. And this really fell on Live Nation. Apparently, in his statement, he was saying that he was going to give the main headlining artist, Anita Baker, the space and time to perform because that is what her team asked which opened up the floodgates of people talking about Anita Baker and rumors about how she doesn't get along with people and how she's unprofessional. Well, Mama decided to get on social media and blast Kenny Babyface Edmonds, blast his fans, people that are trying to gaslight her, threaten her. Look, we already know that stuff is unacceptable. What I did not expect were some of the things that she was saying in, in regards to this. She's talking about how she flies private, denying people's allegations, this, that. Uh, look, at the end of the day, I feel like she's correct. It doesn't fall on her in regards to this Kenny baby face situation. But I need to know, how did Beyonce get in this? She's claiming that Babyface allegedly hates Beyonce. If you want to go see the tweets, go to her page. She's blocked me. Anita Baker. Um, ooh, she been dragging baby face by the face all over the internet ever since he took to the internet and had the audacity to call her out on a show that she paid for, okay? That she paid him on, that she hired him for. I believe he even wrote for her at one time in her career, didn't he? But I know ever since she got the master's back, she been feeling herself, feeling herself. Feeling, I'm feeling herself. She she told her fans do not stream her music until she solidifies this deal, and she did just that, and then told the fans to continue. And I was one of them. I didn't stream until she got her rights back. And when she got her rights back, I put it right back on Sundays for Sunday dinners and Sunday cleaning and folding laundry. Okay. She got a little upset over Babyface trying to, you know, I guess she she thought it was shade because she was just like, I'm, he was like, I'm so sorry, you know, when she did a show up north somewhere. Um, I couldn't come out on stage because Anita Baker was late and then told me I couldn't come out because she took the rest of the show. It's her tour. Okay, she could do what she want to do. She took that personal. Okay, so much so that she says, um, you know, she's tired of, you know, the, the, you know, the, I guess the false narrative and of a co-headliner is creating unrealistic expectations and aggression from his fans towards me. He should tell you guys the truth, okay? And then she said, and by the way, uh, he hates Beyonce. Now I get it, she mad that Babyface and ignited his, his 50, 60 year old, 70 year old fans onto her. And these are older ladies that are tweeting and going off. I just can't believe them old ladies over there tweeting and dragging her. You know what I'm saying? And she can't take that. So she decides to get the gay boys involved. Okay, she she wants the whole LGBTQ to come for his neck. She wants them to adopt him a, a, a geriatric face. She said it's time. Okay, you are no longer a baby. We are about to rate. We you are about to be a grown man today. And she said, and by the way, while you trying to get them to drag me lying on me, he hate Beyonce. There you go. And, and, and while you are at it, uh, Beehive, she said she putting him off the tour. So. The question still remains, was Tony Braxton Anita Baker's replacement? No. Anita won more awards and is well respected all over the world by queens, lords, politicians, and more. Kids can attend her concerts without worrying about seeing revealing outfits, being hypnotized and brainwashed, or seeing booty popping and boobs. Well, you get what I'm saying. Her music a beautiful mixture of jazz, which is my favorite, and blues and R&B is all you would hear. Love it! Oh, and again, Anita kept her clothes on too. She used the brains and her voice, not her body. Think about it, new generation. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications for when I do post more videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.